Okay, let's do this. Hi everyone, my name is Ulmi Damnaskar. I'm a cosmetic chemist and in today's video, I'll be talking about job prospects and careers that you can expect in the cosmetics industry. Before we begin, make sure you are subscribed to this channel and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos that I upload. Let's begin. When we talk about the cosmetics industry, there are two main categories, the business side and the science side. Let's talk about the business side first. Job roles in this category includes working in sales, marketing or even business administration. Though for business administration, it would be much better if you had a degree in business administration or a commerce related background. In sales, you can work with a raw materials company, a third party manufacturer, a brand or a house of brands. And you have to convince your customer to buy the product that your company is offering. You can do that by listing out its pros, how it works and so on and so forth. In marketing, as the word suggests, you have to market or promote the product so that more and more people get curious and interested about it and that leads to more sales. With a science-based degree or qualification, you actually know what goes into the product, so it is easier to explain to the customer how it works. Working in sales and marketing also opens up opportunities for travel, domestic as well as international. But it's not that I joined one sales and marketing, now I'm going to go to the US UK every How frequently you travel or whether you travel at all or not will depend on the level of your post as well as your expertise. If you're planning to work in sales and marketing, make sure you develop your skills in public speaking as well as having good and impactful conversations one-to-one -one with people. This will really help. Now let's move on to the science side. This science side has four subcategories, regulatory, research and development, QA, QC and production. In regulatory, you have to make sure that the product that you're selling abides by all of the rules and regulations put forth in the region of sale. It may also include going through ingredients lists, processes of manufacturing, and you might also have to produce a letter that states specific information that your customer asked for. Or vice versa, even you could be that customer who asked for specific information. A lot of times this is a desk-based job and you can expect job roles like regulatory officer or tech service officer. In research and development subcategory, you can work with a third-party manufacturer, a formulation lab, a brand, and you have to formulate cosmetic products from scratch. You can also work with a raw materials company, but generally research and development in raw materials company includes making raw materials or raw material blends that could be used as ingredients in cosmetic products. In such raw material supplier companies, you can work in their application lab instead. I mean, obviously, if you want to work in their research and development section, you can, you should. But if you want to work in formulations, then you can work in their applications lab. There, you can formulate cosmetic products using the raw materials from your company in order to show and explain your customers how these raw materials can be used. This subcategory of working in research and development, whether you're working in a formulation lab or an application lab, is what I feel is the essence of being a cosmetic chemist. You get exposed to thousands of raw materials, different systems of formulations, hot process, cold process, emulsions, biphase system, triphase systems, anhydrous, hydrous, the list goes on. Your cosmetic science knowledge keeps on increasing day by day and over time you become excellent in formulations. Majority of times this is a lab based role. So be prepared for standing in the lab for long durations of time. You can expect job roles like obviously cosmetic chemist, formulation chemist, product development chemist and research and development chemist. Next subcategory is QAQC or quality assurance quality control. In this subcategory you have to make sure that the product that you're selling is up to the quality standards and checks all of the requirements that are given by regulations as well as internal or in-house criteria as well as the claims that the product is making. Job roles in this subcategory could be a mixture of lab and desk-based job and you can expect roles like QAQC chemist and QAQC officer. The last subcategory is production. In production, you have to make the approved formulas from the lab in the production area. It involves working with huge amounts of raw materials in huge vessels which have capacities of 50 liters, 100 liters, 500 liters or even more. So you can imagine how large scale it is. Then the bulk which is manufactured is filled, packed, labeled and then sent to the customer. Obviously after logistics. These were all job prospects that you can expect if you want to work in the cosmetics industry as an employee. If you want to start something of your own, then that can be done as well. You can be an entrepreneur and start your own cosmetics business. But I will strongly recommend to work at least for a year or two in the cosmetics industry. Get some work experience because that will help you to understand how the business works. So this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed this video and got an insight of job prospects and careers in the cosmetics industry. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and share this video with your friends and family who would be interested in making a career in cosmetic science. And I'll see you later. Bye.